In this video, we will focus on the practical side of investment decision making. Business. We urge you to pay extra attention here, as this is by far the most important part of the topic on capital budgeting. When analysts make investment decisions, they use a comprehensive set of measures to decide whether to accept or reject a project. The most important ones are net present value, or NPV, and internal rate of return, or IRR. As complementary decision criteria, we also have four additional measures, payback period, the discounted payback period, the average accounting rate of return, AAR, and the profitability index, PI. Right, this was our outline. Now let's continue by covering each of the measures individually. We'll start with the NPV. The net present value of an investment is the present value of its future cash inflows minus the present value of the investment's cash outflows. Is it possible that an investment is worth more than what we have paid for it? Consider the following example. Suppose we buy a rundown house for $50,000 and spend another $50,000 on painting, flooring, and other renovation work to fix it up. Our total investment amounts to $100,000. After the renovation is completed, we list the house back on the market and find that it is worth $150,000. In other words, the market value, $150,000, exceeds the cost, $100,000. The net result is that we've gained $50,000 in value. The difference between the investment's market value and its cost is its net present value. This is basically a measure of how much value we create when undertaking an investment. Now, let's organize these cash flows into a formula. The term CFT is the expected net cash flow at time T. N is the projected life of the investment, and R is the discount rate, also known as the opportunity cost of capital. As you can see from the formula, Calculating the NPV of an investment goes through a process, which consists of four steps. First, we need to identify all inflows and outflows related to the investment. Then, we must choose an appropriate discount rate, which in turn allows us to obtain the present value of the cash flows. Third, we use the discount rate to find the present value of each cash flow. Inflows are positive and increase NPV, while outflows are negative and decrease NPV. In the end, we sum all discounted cash flows and find the net present value of the investment. Great. Once we complete each of the steps and come up with a final NPV figure, we can decide whether an investment is worth taking. The rule is as follows. An investment should be accepted if the net present value is positive and rejected when it is negative. In other words, if NPV is higher than zero, we invest in the project. If NPV is lower than zero, we do not invest in the project. What is the rationale behind this rule? When we calculate the NPV of a project, we use the opportunity cost of capital as the discount rate. As we saw earlier, the opportunity cost is the alternative return investors forego when they undertake an investment. When NPV is positive, the investment adds value because it compensates for more than the opportunity cost of capital. That's why a company undertaking a positive NPV project creates value. The opposite is also valid. Accepting investments that have a negative NPV destroys wealth. So far, so good. In our next video, we will estimate the NPV of a capital project and we'll decide whether it's worth undertaking. Okay, great. This is the end of today's video. If you are into educational investment and finance videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks so much for sticking till the end. I'll see you in our next episode.